First, let me talk about the strain gauge. How many of you are taking uh, mechanics of materials lab in this semester? Almost half of class. You have seen something like this used in the in couple of tests at least we have seen using strain gauge. These are something that are used for measuring strain on a surface of a solid element. We attach them, we usually glue them on the surface, wire them to uh, a data logger which records the values of strains when we apply load on the system. Okay, let me show you several examples over here. This is a very simple case. This is a tension element which has a hole, we want to see if there is any stress concentration. How we can determine that? We can install a strain gauge and measure the value of the strain when we apply load on that rod. Or, if in the complicated cases like this, we make attach several sensors on different locations at the surface of this beam to measure the values of strain at different locations. Another application is this one. In this project, uh, we wanted to monitor quality of a pavement in which we use a new kind of concrete. We call that RCC, ruler compacted concrete. And we wanted to see what would be the, so so far we have collected about more than 24 month data and we are analyzing the changes in the strain at different height of this pavement at different locations either in the vertical direction or in the horizontal direction and the strain gauge that we use in that project are much larger than the one that i showed you before they are about um, this size each and they are wired into a data logger that data logger is equipped with one solar panel which generates power and the data is transmitted through cell phone to a device that we have in this campus so I just wanted to show you some examples about why or when we are using strain gauges. For mechanics of materials, we use a strain gauge mostly for answering this kind of problems. We call them strain rosettes. What are these strain rosettes? Strain rosettes are used for determining state of stress or a state of strain at a certain point. Remember, strain gauges are only able to measure normal strains. We are not able to measure shear strain. So how we can determine shear strain at a certain point? One common practice is using three different strain gauges in different angles, then using some formulas to determine shear strains and normal strains in the x, y, and x, y direction. The main equation, the only equation that we use to answer these kind of problems is this one. That is a strain transformation equation. Remember, this stress tran strain transformation equation is different from that I previously introduced. The difference here is instead of having two theta, I have theta. So I just used some trigonometric equations to convert this into this form, which is easier to work with for, for strain rosettes. So again, these two equations are similar to each other. I just used the second format because that would be easier for strain rosette problems. Once we determine the value of strain in each of these gauges, we can then put a system of equations and solve for epsilon x, epsilon y, and gamma xy. Look at this. Do I know how much is epsilon a? Yes, because I'm reading the data strain gauge. So I know how much is the strain in that gauge. Do I know how much is the angle of gauge a with the horizontal axis? Yes, because once I install that, I can measure how much is the angle of that gauge with the horizontal axis. So theta a is known. Now look at the first line of equation. Epsilon a is known. Cosine of 2 theta is known. Sine of uh, theta is known. So everything is known but epsilon x, epsilon y, and gamma xy. If I repeat that for gauge b and gauge c, I will come up with a set of system of equations, three equations, three unknowns, which I can solve that for epsilon x, epsilon y, and gamma xy. All right? Let me quickly solve the problem. There is just one important trick about solving this kind of problem. The rest of that is easy. Consider this case. A strain rosette consisting of three strain gauges oriented as shown was 
mounted on the free surface of a steel machine component. Poisson ratio of that steel is 0.3. Under load, the following strain were measured. Strain in A is negative 600, strain in B is negative 900, and strain in C is positive 700. The question asks, determine principal strains and maximum shear strains for this point. First, set up our system of unknown equations. How much is the angle of gauge A with the horizontal axis? That is zero, okay? And the reading of that gauge is negative 600, so I can set my first equation for that gauge. That would be negative 600 is equal to epsilon x times cosine squared of zero plus epsilon y sine squared of zero plus gamma xy sine, sine of zero cosine of zero. All right, how much would be the angle for B? That is the tricky part. How much, we, I know how much is the reading. Reading is negative 900, but how much is the angle? The angle is always measured from the horizontal axis. So here is from the positive side of horizontal axis. Here is 135. So for the second gauge, I put 135 as a theta. How much would be theta for gauge C? That would be either negative 135 or positive 225, 135 plus 90. That is the only trick about solving this kind of problems. And that gives me strain in x direction equal to negative 600, strain into y direction positive 400, and gamma xy equal to 1600. Remember, these are strain in xy and gamma xy. These are not principal stresses. How I can determine principal stresses? They are pretty easy. I just need to plug the values into this equation and determine the principal stresses. If I do that, I will get 843 and negative 1043 microepsilons for principal normal stresses. 